Welcome back everybody to Rimmold. I've already recorded this episode once more, uh, exactly for the reason I'm about to tell you why is exactly why I restarted it. I've got a new PC, which means that some of the things in-game you might see, uh, some, some of the settings in particular for maybe mods might be a little bit different. I'm not sure if they will be, but just in case you do notice anything different between this, this episode and last episode in terms of gameplay, in terms of mod settings or anything like that, I haven't intentionally changed anything, it's just where I've had to do a full reinstall of Windows, Rimworld, all the mods, set up the new mod list, etc, etc. So, one or two things might be a little bit different. There there is one intentional change I've made, but I apologise if there are certain uh, certain problems here. Turns out uh, I just recorded the whole episode and my microphone was completely fucked. So, hence why I'm redoing the whole goddamn thing. Never mind, huh? So, one thing I have turned off, and I did talk about this last episode, is I have disabled Fog of War. Mainly because of the issues it was causing yesterday with um, with zombies being targeted when they're off screen. One of you pointed out with the Minify mod, anything we've reinstalled was not affected by the Fog of War as well. So, there were a lot of issues with it. And a lot of you also just wanted to see what was happening out there in the world too. So I'm happy to oblige. You know, whatever makes for a better watching experience, as far as I'm concerned, is absolutely the right call to make. Now, I was looking around the map and honestly, uh, I mean, you could sort of see what we're up against here. Uh, in a sense, there are currently 300 zombies on the map and almost all of them are clustered with inside the walls of our base. So... Uh, it's a little bit of a worrying thing, I'll be honest with you. And the reason I think why this has happened is because the other zombies on the map are, are able to fight animals. They're able to fight traders. They're able to fight raiders. They're able to fight whatever. Whereas these guys inside this building, you know, other zombies on the map will be killed off. New ones will spawn in here, but then they're just stuck in here. They're not fighting anything. They're not seeing anything. They're not doing anything, and they can't ever escape. Whereas... All the zombies on the map can can be killed off at some stage. So I'm thinking even if only one or two spawn in here per day per zombie killed off, eventually this building is just going to fill up with all the zombies. There's going to be no zombies left on the map. I, I think it might be how that works. Um, it could be a weird strategy if you want to try and go for it. Obviously, I'm not going to intentionally go for that because it's kind of nuts. But it's kind of weird how everything is always inside. I'm glad that we didn't open up this wall in hindsight to try and get this. Otherwise, we'd have been seriously screwed because these guys over here, uh, I don't know if you can tell that, a mass of zombies here all raging. And these guys do a lot more more damage, like a, a serious amount more damage, and they move a lot faster too. So, kind of glad we didn't open this up in hindsight. Now, another thing I talked about in the video that what I just recorded that I now had to delete is that you might notice that a lot of the zombies have a lot of um, what I think is only cosmetic changes. So, say for example, um, we've got a zombie there wearing some armor. Or we've got, uh, well, let's see what else can I see here. Uh, I saw a zombie earlier, like this guy wearing the helmet, for example. I believe that is just cosmetic. I don't think it actually affects them in combat. So shooting this guy in the head is no different than shooting this guy in the head, for example. I think it's just to give them a little bit of variation, something nice to look at. I don't think it actually has any effect on the combat. Or at least I certainly fucking hope not. How are our people doing? Because they are very, very pissed off right now, huh? Big brain, what's up, my man? Um, you have moderate malnutrition. Oh, God. Um, I eat some food? Uh, why are you not... Oh, my God, have we got no food? Shit, we actually haven't got any food. Okay, then. Let's be very careful about how we do with these farms. Uh, I guess when I recorded the last one, they just immediately got this rice. I didn't actually realize that Big Brain was that malnourished. Um, quickly, come and eat Come and eat some rice, my friend. Come and eat some rice. Uh, go, and get, go and get your own rice, and then immediately start eating that. Because the last thing we want is these people going on, like, berserk or crazy mental breakdowns or anything on those. At least you're taking it to the table. It's not full war crimes here. Right, is that going to deal with your... Surely you're going to still be malnourished after that. Ooh, we might just be able to avoid mental break risk. No, it's not going to be close enough, is it? A raw food, awful barrack. Yeah, we need to work on the actual base today. That, that's definitely one of the major things. You guys are giving me a big old checklist of things I also need to work on. Again, I've already done this all once, so I kind of have an idea in my head of where we want to start. So, first things first, then, I'm going to get the very easy one, the sort of very essential life-sustaining one out of the way, and that's going to be in terms of a freezer, so that we can stock up food just in case of winter. You know, we might be hit by a cold snap right now, or toxic fallout, something like that, and we would be super fucked. So, let's keep aware of storing food over the long term, just in case anything like that does happen, you know, worst-case scenario. What we need to do is also build bedrooms for everybody. That's really affecting the mood quite significantly, as we can see there. Awful barrack, also shared with other people, is just a compounding mood problem. Um, especially because if they had their own bedroom, it made them a lot happier too. So what I built was a load of 7x7 seven seven bedrooms to store in sort of this area. Then this area was going to act as a stockpile style zone. Um, in fact, if we, I think I did it like that. That whole thing is stockpile. This area is recreation, then this was sort of work crossed with a, a sort of dining area. Um, th this whole thing was a workroom, this area is recreation, then of course this is the kitchen. Sort of direct 
directly connected up to the bedrooms there worked out quite well. So we'll start working on this immediately and I'll get all these bedrooms set up again. Oh, God, I get to do all this again. How fun. Okay. Um, quickly get all of this shit together. Now, in terms of actual things we can build, we are very, very lucky in the sense that we have something like, I think it was 43 components last time I checked. Um, 52 components, right, because I haven't built, built the coolers yet or anything like that. But in terms of building, we are set for a very, very long time. In fact, we've even got some quarryable areas too. So if we need any more resources, not that I think we will for quite some time. But if we need any more resources, we can very quickly put down a quarry and, and get to work on that as well. Now, I've got to bear in mind we've got a couple more prisoners ready to go as well. In fact, I'll flip that one over to medical. I'm, I'm slowly remembering what I did last episode. Um... These two, when we recruit them, we'll obviously need some room for bedrooms as well. So I'm probably just going to build into this building. I figured, you know, I, originally I was planning on tearing it down, but we might as well leave it there because we can incorporate it into the base eventually. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go for... I'm trying to build things out of wood mostly because obviously that's replenishable compared to the steel. Um, or at least it's a little less desperate than steel. Right, let's get all that shit together. Let's put a door there as well. That's looking pretty good. Um, then we need dresses in each room. Now, we've already got one to start off with. I'll just go ahead and stick that. I mean, honestly, anywhere is fine. There we go. And let's go to... If we click on the bed... Yeah, there we go. We can build a new wooden dresser. Perfect. That'll do for the time being. That's obviously going to take a long time before this stuff is ready to go. Rick's going to Rick's going to have to take some serious time doing that. Um, do you also want to go harvest this rice so that we can cook some goddamn meals? Well, we just had a trade caravan walk past and decided that the best thing to do against the zombies would be to use a doomsday rocket launcher, which not only peppered our goddamn walls and destroyed our embrasures, but they actually set fire to this gigantic stack of uh, ammo cartridges, which means there is now ammo literally spraying down from the skies. So if we go outside now, there's a there's quite a good chance that we could be hit and killed horribly, um, because that they do have like realistic ballistics, so wherever those things are landing is, is where they will take damage if anyone stood there. So, fingers crossed that that stops going off soon. There we go, okay, we're good. And that's what's left of the caravan. Man, this is, um, this is kind of gross, huh? Just being absolutely ripped apart by a pack of zombies. Look at that, they're, they're just descending out. It's really kind of gross that they're knocked down and then they're just descended on and eaten alive. You know, they don't, they don't knock them down until they die. The zombies will eat them to death at this stage. Um, and, and the, 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 the actual NPCs stay alive for ages when they're actually down. So, um, yeah. Wow, that's a good caravan. Now, one thing I noticed as well. Let me see if I can spot this again. I actually ranted and raved about this last time. God knows if I can see it again this time, though. Somewhere on the map is a man wearing... Let me see if I can spot it. Um, excuse me. Where, where did it go? <gasps> there he is. Okay. This guy here. What do you notice about him? Well, A, he's got a charge SMG, which is obviously an incredibly good weapon for this stage of the game. He's wearing power armor helmet. We've got power armor right now. That means if we get Rick into that power armor helmet, plus the power armor body, plus the charge SMG, which is an incredibly fast firing gun that deals a, a shit ton of damage, we could potentially survive anything. Because I very much doubt zombies are going to be able to get through power armor in a hurry. They would, they would seriously have to pile on and get very, very lucky with one of their attacks to get through. We've seen from previous playthroughs how powerful this power armor is compared to these zombies. So, I kind of want to risk going for that, but I also feel like it'll get our guys killed immediately. Um, oh, I feel like we've got bigger fish to fry right now. Oh my god, they're already eating all those fucking meals, you greedy boys. You utterly greedy boys. Oh, I mean, we're probably also feeding it to the prisoners, don't forget. Um, I feel like maybe building the whole base at first would be a good idea, but also... Also, it is a power armor helmet, and I don't really want it to gr degrade away. I mean, obviously, it'll last quite a long time just lying on the floor there. Um, so, oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, go and, go and get this idiot up as well. Good lord. Black Hive attack. Oh, god. Oh, okay. Not a big deal, to be honest. So, the Black Hive are um, sort of just like an insect hive, basically. Slightly stronger variant of the insect hive. Um, now, in theory, these guys are going to get attacked by the zombies, aren't they, right? Because they count as wild animals. Yeah, look at that. Man, these things are... Oh my god, I had a trade caravan turned up at the same time. Well, that was unfortunate. You guys do not know what you've just walked into. Holy shit. Wow. Um, is that hyperweave? Uh, it's just cloth, apparently. Just blue cloth, okay. Um, they've got flat jackets. We want to keep an eye on what these trade caravans are dropping. Around the edge of the map, the longer we play this, is just going to be an absolute bounty of random shit for us to pick up. Of course, as these trade caravans spawn, if they spawn on the main road, if they spawn where there's a mass of zombies... Just going to get ripped apart instantly. And if they're ripped apart instantly, they're just, their shit's just going to drop on the floor. So it might make sense at some stage just running along the edge. I mean, look at the amount of stuff that's just piled up here. We've got, like, EMP grenades. We've got we've got go juice. We've got pistol ammo. We've got loads of pemmican charge rifles as well. Shit, that could be very, very good. My lord. Um, it's, again, very close on this. And hopefully these black hive insects will be dealt with by the, by the zombies. So really, the raids don't affect us too much right now. 
I want to get the stop pass set up first before we do absolutely anything else, because that's contributing a lot to their negative move. The awful barrack is, is being caused mostly because there is just so much shit in a stop pile lying around, and of course we've barely finished anything else here, so uh, dealing with that first and foremost is probably not a terrible plan. Well, that happened even faster than I could react to the damn thing. Uh, the prisoner went berserk and then was immediately shot and killed, like literally took no time whatsoever there. Um, so you are now dead, Aztecs. What did you... Oh, shot in the kidney. That will do it. Yeah, that will, that will definitely do it, huh? Shot and immediately destroyed. So that's one person down, unfortunately. But if they're going to go berserk, they are, they are, they are going to be shot. And there's no way in hell I'm not stuff turning our people off of uh, off of self-defense. Especially when we've got uh, this. Literally on the other side of the wall. An absolute pack of raving zombies. And especially on this wall as well. My god, I feel like we're a little bit... They do tend to gravitate towards the base, right? I'm not just going crazy because there's no zombies down here whatsoever. I feel like they're just trying to get as close as they can to whatever you're building. Oh, the mental breakdowns are getting really out of hand. It's still a complete lack of food. We always have just enough food to be able to feed them for that day. And then there's never quite enough for them to get up and have breakfast. And it's kind of driving them a little bit mad here. Rick is cooking just as fast as he can, if he can manage. But these guys are ravenous. They just seem to be eating non-stop. And of course, the rice isn't growing particularly quickly. How are the potatoes doing? Oh my god, another mental breakdown. We need to deal with this base. Okay, you know what? You just start cleaning this room. Let's just do anything that can... Oh, for fuck's sake. Let's just do anything that can... Uh, that can help deal with mental breakdowns right now. The second we can deal with that, the better as far as I'm concerned. Um, is that stockpile ready to go, more or less? Uh, let's go ahead and just build roof over all of this. And then we'll also, actually, we probably want to build roof just over basically everything here, right? There we go, that'll do it. Um, and then we'll get all of the stockpile stuff moved over. Because those are probably contributing a massive amount of, yeah, look at that. The amount of beauty negatives that we're getting from, from this area in particular, I think is kind of killing us a little bit. So let's go ahead and copy those settings, paste them into there, and then we'll just go ahead and delete that old stockpile and ho hopefully haul it over in a, in a couple of seconds. Shouldn't take too long, seeing as it's just literally into the next room there. Um, let's go ahead and haul urgently, get all this shit moved as soon as possible, my boys. That will hopefully help out a little bit. It's still not going to be fantastic. Yeah, they, they can't even finish cleaning the room now because they are too light. It's gone. Mental breakdown. Hooray. Everyone's favorite. Um, okay. I want to also get a latrine dug as soon as possible so that they have uh, some sort of hygiene going on here. Let's get a steel latrine. It's all I can build it out of right now. We're completely out of wood. And then we also need a st stall door for, for privacy as well. Let's start working on that right away. Let's just immediately start working on that. Probably also the coolest too. Probably not a terrible idea if you don't mind. Now, this one's gone mad because of psycho withdrawal, so there wasn't anything I could do to try and stop this one. Okay, um, I mean, let's knock it down. I'm, I'm, as much as I want to keep the colonists, I'm kind of tempted to kill them, seeing as we don't have enough food for our own people. Um, if she dies, she dies. You know what? This is down to fate at this stage. You know, I said I was going to try and save as many people as possible. That includes our own people. When we haven't got any food for our guys, we've literally got how much? 23 rice to our name right now. Um, because they are literally eating it as fast as I can bloody harvest it still. I might forbid them from eating it for obviously quite some time until we can cook up some meals. It would be a lot more efficient than just uh, sort of leaving them to their own devices here. I already tended to her. If she dies, she dies. Like I said, I'm not really too concerned. But in out two hours, I feel like she's probably not long for this world then. Yeah, she has fucking gone. That was a quick two hours that was a very very quick two hours but you know what let's focus on keeping our own people happy before we start recruiting other people you know what we are managing to stay on top of the mood now now that we've actually got a couple of meals into them we tidied up the base a little bit we've uh, got some lamps in as well not being in complete darkness even just digging a toilet these simple things have really brought the mood level up so that i think was definitely worthwhile Moving all the shit over as well. I can't, I can't believe how much that has helped. Even just the tiniest little bit that that, that that will have contributed by adding a little bit of beauty to the room. What the fuck are you doing going over the whole farm? Um, was that me being a bit gung-ho with the roofing over? Don't think I did that. Maybe I did? Oh, well, it doesn't matter too much. Let's make sure that that stuff's removed then. Otherwise, we uh, might end up with no food left. Thank you. So the cool thing is, and we've actually seen this before in RimWorld with um, things like leaving psychic ships for a very, very long time. Which is something I very much do quite often. When trees don't have many places to grow, because the map all, always wants a specific amount of trees. I think there's like a minimum level that each map is kind of expected to have as long as it fits the biome. Because there are no places for the trees to grow, or at least not as many places there will be on your regular map, because it's all industrialized, you know, it's all, it's all stone paths and big buildings. The areas where trees can grow, trees will grow very fast and in quite a lot of frequency, which is why we basically got this whole little grove here of, of trees. So if we remove this building and actually uh, so, sort of smooth all this over, because there aren't many places for trees to grow, I think it will encourage a lot of trees to grow in a very, very small area, if that makes sense. Even more effective than, uh, than sowing trees. We've seen this before, like I said, with psychic ships, so I basically let psychic ship cover most 
to the map, genuinely because I forgot about it. But the one thing that got me to notice it was because of the massive amount of trees that grew right outside of our base. Simply because they didn't have anywhere else to grow. So that's something that uh, we could try and scum up a little bit. I don't know quite how we're going to be able to apply that to our campaign very well. But uh, I guess we open up a little more area. It might encourage a few more to grow. Anyway, uh, it's just sort of a weird little thing that I've, I've noticed playing this before in, in with like these weird scenarios. You're right. Oh my god, it counts as a prisoner bed. Why? Um, there you go. You can you can go back to bed now. God knows why that outside was uh, was affected like that. Just make sure these walls don't burn down. I'm keeping a very close eye on the fire notification. Oh my god, there's so many now. Holy shit, I think that's gotten worse, hasn't it? I genuinely believe that's gotten worse. So, there's a lot of lightning. Uh, and it's kind of a pain in the ass. As you can see, there dry thunderstorms. Massive pain in the ass for trying to make sure these walls don't burn down. Especially because some of them built stone as well. Do need to make sure that we've got a nice inner wall, you know, that is made of stone, steel, whatever, that's just not flammable. Because this is super, super dangerous the way it is right now. Why are you not pausing, game? Hello? Thank you, good fucking god. Um, yeah, that's happened, and there's me smashing the spacebar, and it's just not doing anything. Uh, so apparently I've now got to manually pause with, uh, with the pause button. Very annoying. Uh, this is basically going to release a zombie horde, isn't it? So we might as well just treat this as, uh, as a code red scenario here. Uh, big brain. Grab yourself a gun, my friend. You're gonna need it. What's got ammo in it? That's got 30 shots in it. Uh, we could also get a... I should really do their loadouts so and make sure they've all got a gun, I guess, at this stage. Wouldn't hurt. Um, get that equipped. Pick up as much ammo as you can as well. Rick and Paola already are well equipped and ready to go. So let's get these guys up here. This is definitely gonna open up the horde. It's almost certainly gonna open up the horde. If we go and stand them right next to the fight... Yeah, here we go. Okay. It's out of hand. It's out of hand. The reason I wanted them so close is because their loss massively knock out the fires, obviously, if it's if it's adjacent to them. So, it's a way of having to do slightly less microing. Oh, God, this has gone out of hand. My nice defended base is catching... Oh, it's all burning the fuck down. Okay. Um, make sure... Can we go and knock these fires out here? There we go. Okay. We should be alright, because this area isn't particularly bad um, in terms of... Well, in, in terms of, obviously, the amount of zombies we've got going on, to be honest with you. Right, there we go. Let's make sure all of this shit is rebuilt as soon as possible, then, because this is pretty bad. Um, I'll, what I'll do, then, is I'll just kind of a whole bunch of these steel walls, because this is sort of, uh, needs to be got must right now. So let's go and get all this shit reinstalled as soon as possible. What is that? B for be installed. Uh, get that one. <laughs> Stupidest thing I've ever said. Let's get that moved over there, and this one, and this one. On the plus side as well, it's making our walls slightly stronger, you know? Replace all these crappy old wooden ones with, uh, full-blown steel walls. That'd be kind of nice. I'm gonna get you prioritized working on that one, and then you, I'm gonna prioritize working on that one. Thank you. Alright, we should be fairly safe, and I don't think we've got much to worry about there. I very much doubt they're gonna be able to pathfind round to us in the small amount of time it's gonna take to get these things reinstalled. You go back about your business then, please just make sure he doesn't leave the area. A lot of you guys point out, yes, I could put down areas and whatnot, but I'd have to sketch out the entire wall, and honestly, it's much easier to, given how rarely the walls come down, it's much easier just to keep close on things. I will do that between episodes, though, just make sure we've got a big old area sketched out of all the perimeters, just to force them to stay inside that. It's the hip lot buster you've all been waiting for. Rhinos versus zombies. So, because the zombies are attacking the animals, is obviously encouraging them to go into manhunter packs. This is a really nice way to keep the zombie numbers down. Unfortunately, wait, whoa, 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 did I just see that right? Has that been infected? It did flash green, and that's normally a sign that they've been bitten by a zombie and there's a chance of being infected. Zombie rhino sounds horrendous. That sounds like just about the worst thing we could ever hope to fight here. Wild boar avenge as well. It's a similar scenario, the wild boar. So animals spawn in in waves in Rimworld. So you'll frequently see, you know, a whole pack of wild boars turn up once, a whole pack of big deer turn up once, if there's not enough animals on the map. Um, so these boys have obviously all spawned in and then immediately been attacked by the zombies, and now they're all going completely butt wild. Again, it's a nice way to thin out the zombie herd. Unfortunately, the main zombie herd that I'm worried about is, is this shit right here. Um, we're gonna have to do something about this at some point, aren't we? Even if we just installed a wall there to push them back a little bit, it would help out quite a lot. Um, uh, mainly because our people wouldn't be able to see them through this gap in the wall, and then they wouldn't immediately want to try and attack them, which is exactly what they're doing right now. Um, how the hell am I gonna deal with that? It's not like we could even just put a heater on, like, the outside of the room and then take out a wall and then roast them all, because I don't believe that would work either. Um, how could we do this? We could take down this one, go through here, go through the north and sort of set up a, a turret or something. Um, like a multiple night turret, IEDs, I don't know, whatever, to, to just quickly clear this area out. This is horrible. Like, just having this right on the other side of the wall is probably pretty nerve-wracking for these three guys living here. They breached the walls. Oh my god, they actually got in. I have no idea how the hell they got this close this quickly. My god. Uh, was it drop pods or something? Uh, I need to check the messages now, because they seriously came out of nowhere. There was me focusing on the building and getting shit reinstalled, and these guys have just turned up. Um, messages. What was it? Raid. Here we go. Right in transport pods nearby. Okay, nice to see that we're still under threat from just about... Do not shoot Rick. 
you shoot fucking Rick, you die. Uh, Paula, you shoot, uh, you shoot this fella here. Uh, let's go for the auto. Oh, let's go burst fire, actually, because I haven't got that much ammo. Um, you just kill whoever you deem to be the best one to kill. They are going, oh, there we go. They're gone. They're gone. Take him down. Oh, we got ourselves two prisoners again. Nice, okay. And how are you doing? Uh, shot in the head by a gunshot. We had that power armor helmet. Just saying, this wouldn't be a problem. Okay, man, that was, um, that was very, very fucking fortunate there. My god, I thought we were gonna get absolutely wiped out. Um, patch up that wall immediately, Rick. I know that you've been shot in the literal head, but, uh, you know, people have been through worse. Couriers have been through worse. Let's get this shit dropped and let's get this reinstalled immediately, because I'd rather not have a stonking great hole in the wall. What we've got, apparently, raiders dropping in on drop pods along with zombies and wild animals aplenty who are all going completely nuts. Completely insane rhinoceroses is at the bottom of things I want storming through this wall right now. What was that? What was that? What, what caused this to occur right now? Oh, is this guy fleeing right shooting at a zombie? Um, who do we want to capture, if anybody? Bleeding out nine hours. In fact, we can get a couple of these guys. Bleeding out in two hours. You are screwed. Um, let's focus on Jimenez and Salin, then. Um, have we got any, we got any doors? Yeah, we've got a door there. So let's go ahead and reinstall that one there. Uh, Rick, do me a favor. Work on that one. Let's go ahead and, when he's done that, turn this into prisoner. In fact, we've turned into prisoner already, can't we? Because it's technically, this technically counts as an enclosed area. Uh, so we want to capture you and we want to capture, Paolo, where have you gone? Excuse me. Uh, can we capture this one? Right, okay. And then this guy, I'm just going to leave to die, to be honest with you. In fact, I should probably strip him off, shouldn't I? Uh, come, come strip. Come strip. Give me your clothes. Thank you. Um, your, your, sorry, did that call him? Oh my god, I thought his name was Rick Crimes then for a second. Dog leather t-shirt. You definitely do not deserve saving. In fact, slice that man's throat. Never trust a man who turns up in a dog leather t-shirt. Right. Big Brain, you need to start working on that. What, somebody point out I should probably get the uh, the stock up mob, which allows me to carry medicine and use medicine from the inventory. Completely agree. Fantastic idea. Didn't work with Combat Extended last time I used it, but I think that was because of other mods we had alongside that as well. With just this mod pack... Oh, that person's apparently fucking dead during surgery. Okay. Um, a little bit annoying. Thank you very much. At least you tried, I guess. So the next big thing then is some sort of running water slash shower slash bathroom. I mean, it's going to have to be a big old shared area for the time being. We could use this area here specifically, which is why I've, I've moved those batteries over a little bit. Sure, running water right next to gigantic industrial sized batteries won't be a problem at all, right? Right? Um, <laughs> until the whole house burns down, that is. So we need a couple of things here. We're going to need a wooden water tower to start off with. Um, or I guess a steel because we've actually got a decent amount of steel. Doesn't matter where we put this. Absolutely anywhere is fine. Apparently we can put it under a roofed area too. So we might as well stick it in the stop pile seeing as that's um, exactly what it does. Let's get rid of this very, very quickly so I can at least start planning out. Sorry to wait you up there, Rick, for uh, what is seemingly a completely mundane and pointless task. Right, let's get um, steel water tower put down. Nice. Let's get, uh, we need an electric pump, and then we also need a water well, right? Uh, from what I remember, it's been a long time since I've done this, but I don't really think it was that complicated. It was like this plus, uh, this one as well, I think. Uh, pumps water from wells to water towers. Right, I'm almost certain it's those two. Then we, uh, run a big old, uh, pipe up to the, the thing, and then we run a big old pipe up to the bathroom or whatever we want plumbed in, basically. Um, uh, the water pumps are apparently also very good. Um, what are we looking at? It's just 103 steel. Might be a bad idea, um, especially if we're trying to... We're saying that we've got a, such a huge amount of electricity. Although these things, I think, pump more water. 3,000 litres a day, right? Versus, uh, what was the other one? Not that we really need that, to be honest with you. Uh, electric pump does... Where is the electric pump? Yeah, okay, let's build a wind one instead. Because it's, it's almost the same amount of steel. We need to save our components a little bit as well. But this one is just so much more efficient. Um, so I'll just stick this on the farm somewhere, I guess. To plant another row of crops to make up for it. But, uh... That'll do. That's fine. Okay, let's plant some more potates to make up for the fact that I'm taking up a line of potates for for just the water mill there. Granted, it's obviously quite important, so it, it's a fair exchange, I think. Let's get all of this shit tilled as well. There we go. It's not the fact that we don't have enough at land tilled to be able to feed our people. The problem is that our... Food is coming in, and it's coming in like, you know, 14, they'll, they'll harvest 14 rice immediately, eat it, and then they'll be hungry again soon, say, 14 raw rice for a meal, and that's, it sort of gets into this, um, horrible pattern of, of immediately harvesting, eating, harvesting, eating, because there isn't enough food in the stockpile, so what I did is obviously stop them eating it a little bit until we cook it into meals, so that it goes along a, a much further way, right, okay, so we've got that dealt with, then what else do we need, let's check out the hygiene again. 
toilet probably wouldn't go and miss her. Uh, given how long they've fucking been here and they've, they've been just shitting on the ground, shitting on the floor apparently. Why not? We'll live like animals. God damn it. Okay, uh, let's put this behind the corner. They do like a little bit of privacy. They can share all just one big bathroom, but, uh, it needs to have some amount of privacy to it. You know, it needs to be behind a door or a separate room, something like that. Sit down in a steel bathtub, and then I'm also gonna go for an electric boiler, because we have a ridiculous amount of electricity. And then we also want a hot water tank to be able to store that in. Nice, so that's gonna increase their mood as well. The bath gives a massive amount of relaxation. Plus having, you know, warm water will give a bonus to that as well. Helps with their cleanliness, which is obviously also quite useful seeing as right now they are literally washing in an untreated well. Can't imagine stagnant water is particularly good for making you smell nice. Um... Uh, who's it said, like, I think it was basins, um, are very, very useful in the kitchen. Some of that might have just been under the misc tab, now that I think about hygiene misc. Uh, there we are, kitchen sink, that's what we need. So this will give a passive bonus to, um, room cleanliness, essentially, but we do need to be very careful about making sure that it's obviously, you know, filled with water and connected up to the grid. So we'll put that there for the time being, trying to make an actual dedicated, uh, kitchen area. Now, something we can do as well is build a biosolids composter, and in fact, I believe we can make a septic tank. So with this, we can make fertilizer, but of course, we've got the tilled soil. I believe the fertilizer gives a much bigger bonus than the tilled soil. The tilled, bear in mind, we've got the very nerfed version of the tilled soil monster, instead of it being like 200% fertility, it's only like 120%. Um, so if we go, I, I don't know exactly how to use the fertilizer, but if I can find a way to do it, that seems like a great idea, especially when we're short on food or kind of desperate for food as well. Um, I think besides that though, that's, that's a good start to things. Septic tank is obviously quite expensive. Um, I believe it was the, maybe it was the septic tank that we needed. It doesn't matter either way. It's, it's not such a big deal. Let's focus on actually getting running drinking water before we're worried about, you know, setting up fertilizers and things like that. Oh, another prisoner. prisoner. Well, you know what? If you die, you die. I, ideally, I do want to keep a couple of them alive. So we'll get into melee distance just so we can immediately start beating the shit out of him when he, okay, or we could just start... Or we just absolutely fucking light him up. That works as well. Um, granted, I could have turned off friendly, or I could have turned off auto fire there. You know what? If he dies, he dies. Again, we don't have enough food, and honestly, oh, was he that good? No. Plants, cooking, we've already got that dealt with, thank you. Research is what I'm really looking for right now, to be honest with you. Take him back to bed, but I imagine he's going to drop down dead here and there. I will try and save him, but uh, I'm, I wouldn't lose any sleep, let's put it this way, if he did end up dying here. So given that, I, I originally thought we wouldn't get any other people, which is why I said, oh, we're trying to save absolutely everyone. But given that we've had a bloody prison full more this episode than every other episode combined we've done of this so far, I feel like we're doing alright. I feel like, I feel like, in terms of recruiting new people, that won't really be a huge issue. So we're gonna have to dig up a whole bunch of floors as well, because it turns out all of this, uh, hygiene crap has very much eaten straight through, haha, <laughs> pardon the pun, our steel supply is just completely fucked at this stage. Um, and until I'm more prepared to build a quarry, which I'm not yet, because I'd rather get everything else set up first, obviously quarrying is kind of the last thing you need to worry about when everyone's dying of malnutrition, or at least a little bit pissed off by it, malnutrition. Plenty of steel until, still left to reclaim a lot of these buildings. You gotta bear in mind though, it's not infinite, so I do need to start thinking of more permanent things in the future, although there's still plenty of shit. Oh man, we need to get this reinstalled. God damn it. This I should have set up a very, very long time ago. If we can get this and an orbital trade. Yeah, so there was one all the way down here. If we could get a comms console as well, opens up all orbital trade to us. Which means if we do run out of steel, well, we can just get in touch with someone and immediately buy some more steel. Things along those lines. Why aren't you going to bed? Why are you sleeping in the field? Go to bed, you weird man. Oh, there we go. The first major harvest is in. We've got more than enough food to last this lifetime here. I'm really happy with the progress today. It, it, it took kind of some time there. Lots of interruptions with the walls and uh, zombies and you know how it do. It's from all, you're always going to get interruptions. You're not just going to be smooth sailing. Otherwise, it'd be kind of a bit boring, huh? So we've almost got the, the water grid set up now. Just waiting on actually the, the pipes to be installed and obviously a little bit more for the bathroom. Digging up a bunch of steel tiles there so we will have enough steel to hopefully get all of this finished quite nicely as well. I've got the, uh, the water tower is already built there but besides that i mean three bedrooms built we've got a dedicated freezer section we've got a prisoner still set up or i should say a prison set up there um yeah this is this has gone pretty nicely i think dividing out the stock room and actually moving that stuff over to is has been very very nice plus plenty of room for expansion because we've sort of all, already started to incorporate this other building in with uh in with everything else i'm gonna leave this one here for today because i've got a lot of other stuff to keep setting up uh in the in the background for like pc stuff recording related things i still don't have any video editing software so if I want this episode to go up on today, uh, I'm going to have to be pretty quick about getting that shit thrown together. So thank you all for watching. I apologize if there have been any issues with the audio. Any mod issues you've noticed as well, please let me know and I'll try and get that sorted for tomorrow. But it should 
just be back to the regular sort of smooth sailing following that. So thank you all for your patience. Uh, I don't have my Patreon list or anything, but let's give a big shout out to those guys for making YouTube viable, for making it so nice to deliver you garbage sponsorships through terms of video. Uh, don't forget, guys, Rimworld slots.com for your finest reward loot boxes you want that charge rifle just pay 10.99 and there's a 1 0.01 percent chance but except for youtubers who will always get it haha <laughs> no i'm not doing that i'm sorry thank you goodbye see you guys all tomorrow <clears throat> please stop hey stop recording